Now, I love this remainder theorem. And this is what it says. It says that if f of x, if f of x is divided by the factor x minus k, if you're divided, if you're dividing it by that, then the remainder is f of k. The remainder is f of k. <coughs> that means that the remainder that you get when you do synthetic division is equal to your function value if you had plugged that in. Look back at this. Let's look back at this last example that we had. If, if this guy right here had been my function, okay, what's the k value that I had? X plus four. K value is not plus four, it's negative four. Uh, the k value, sorry. Yes. If I had plugged negative four into all of these x's, my answer would be negative 827. That's what it's saying. Because let me ask you this, do you know what negative four to the fifth power is? It's negative 1,024. But instead of you having to plug in and get really large numbers to evaluate a function, especially when you have things that are to the fourth and fifth power and larger, if I do the synthetic division, which went pretty smoothly for me, I can get the answer. Where did you say the answer was for negative 4 and 5? 224. Negative 1,024. I thought you got it wrong, and I did it. I thought you didn't. Yes, see, uh, my alter ego is negative math man 1024. You guys are. It's like your bizarro. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's that's my bizarro personality. And see, that guy actually cares, and he has a heart, and he's actually nice to his students. <laughs> Let me give you an example. If I say this is my function, f of x is three x to the fifth plus 9x to the fourth minus 28x to the third <coughs> minus 38x minus 7. This is your function. Okay? I can then say evaluate f of negative 5. Now you know what some people are going to do, for, do to me? Because your test will have two parts, one part without a calculator, one part with. This is going to be on the part without a calculator. You know what some students are going to do? They're going to plug negative 5 in here and evaluate this. Now, you can do that. I don't recommend you doing that, especially if the instructions say, use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to evaluate. Because if I do that, This, look what I'm saying here. My k is right here. This is my k. I've got x to the fifth, fourth, third. When I do my synthetic division, <coughs> what goes in this box here at the bottom right? My remainder goes here, right? What this synthetic, or what the division, what the remainder theorem is saying is that the number you get here in this box is f of negative 5 as long as your k value is the same as that, which is negative 5. If I do synthetic division, this remainder is my function evaluated for negative 5. Do you understand what I'm saying with that? Yes. So what are your coefficients? What's the coefficient for x to the fifth? Then what? Nine. Nine. Minus 28. Zero. zero. Oh, that's a zero, isn't it? <laughs> I almost put negative 38. That would have been wrong. <coughs> negative 30. 
Why would it have been wrong for me to put negative 38 here and then just negative 7? I don't have an x squared. I'm missing like I need to put a 0. If you had done long division with this, you would have seen why having a 0 there is important so that columns line up correctly. So let's do the easy stuff here. Once you get going, I feel like you kind of get in a groove here. The 3 comes down here. Now multiply. What do you get? So negative 15, then what? I get negative 6, multiply. Positive or negative? Positive. So we get what? Multiply again. Add. I get negative 10. Multiply, what do you get? Add, and you get? Multiply. Negative 60, add, and you get negative 67. So my claim here is that using the remainder theorem, for this function, f of negative 5 equals what? Equals negative 67. That's the answer. Now, I know you may have a hard time believing that, but let's check the calculator here. If I store negative 5 into x, and I type in this function, 3x to the 5th plus 9x to the 4th minus 28x to the 3rd minus 38x <coughs> minus 7, what is that supposed to give me? I say it gives you negative 67. And the calculator says it equals negative 67. Isn't that awesome? But I need you to process some information for me. We've already said this before. What do you want your remainder to equal? Zero. Zero. Zero, because that means that factor goes in an even number of times, and it actually is a factor, right? If your remainder is zero, that means your function has a zero at that k value. If you have a zero at that k value, that means if it's real, you have a what? Factor. You have an x-intercept. Say that again. If, you, if this remainder had been zero, that means that this negative 5 is what we call a zero of your function, which means that f of negative 5 equals zero which corresponds to an x-intercept of negative 5, 0. Show that. Well, like, let me give you an example where we, we can show that. Um, well, can we just use the same formula? No, because it's not a 0. Right? It's, it's not a 0. Now, whether this guy has a 0 or not, I, I don't know. I mean, I could graph it, and, but odds are this guy is not very pretty because I just made it up. and. But let's do some examples where I'm going to show you. I'm going to ask you, is something a zero or not? And what are the implications from that? Negative 5, negative 67 would be a point on that, right? Right. If this is your function notation here, that means that oh, yes. the ordered pair negative 5, negative 67 is a point on the graph. Good analysis there. Yes. Which means that if you can equal zero, if you have a number comma zero, that corresponds to a, an x-intercept. 